Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry I'm three or four minutes late. Uh, trying to get the stream to be as smooth as possible. Looks like it's still a little glitchy, but got the internet running a little faster. So, um, tonight I wanted to, first of all, thank you guys for participating in the Aquascape contest, if you are. Um, we have so far, it looks like about a dozen entries already. Um, I know that a lot of you are procrastinating because for a fact people have sent me examples of what they're working on and haven't quite turned it in yet. So I will allow a little more freedom in the next 24 hours or so if you do have it, but uh, submit it. Feel free to. Um, if you don't want to put your name with it, that's fine. You can do it anonymously if you want to email it to me and I'll post it for you. Um, and I'll just assign you a whatever. If you have a call sign you want, I can give you that. Or if you just want me to post it, um, Aquascape number two or whatever, we can do that also. So, uh, first of all, I wanted to say awesome job, you guys. A lot of the Aquascapes are definitely not just hobbyist level. They are, are, are up there with things that you'd see in shops and stores for Aquascaping. So, I'm really uh, excited, you know, that that uh, you guys had some fun with this and, and so forth. And uh, I really love seeing the pictures for the inspiration, too. It's really cool. So uh, let's say hi to who's uh, wandering in this fine evening. Uh, we've got Jennifer. How are you doing? Um, <laughs> Jennifer, you're saying you're horrible. Yours looked great. Um, Ken, how's it going? Um, let's see here. Ah, uh, biofilm, you got the white, white, uh, or clear water, or milky, you know, the wood rot thing, the clear rot, huh? Um, you know, sometimes, uh, snails can clean that up, but really it's, it's bacteria dying after it's fed on tannins, and a lot of times cellulose, um, from the plant, or tannins from the plant, the cell wall of that is is just an empty cell wall basically so you've got like an empty orb of strong cellulose and the the it dies on the inside because the bacteria eats it drench uh how's it going drench aquaculture um i need a blunt <laughs> what's going on um yeah, so if you guys feel like um, you have a tank that you didn't necessarily scape, but maybe it's a biotope tank, or maybe it's, I mean, if you just think it looks pleasing, you can submit that too. I mean, that's fine. Uh, obviously, um, the, the idea was to put a little effort into it specifically behind it, but if you did that when you created the aquarium, then that's understandable too. Uh, Sonny Doan, Doan, it's good to, uh, see you. Yeah, I heard your tank crack. That is a bummer. Um, I'm sorry about that. And, uh, let's see. Uh, Chevy Fish, what's going on? Um, look, you said, uh, not, you're not technical enough? Uh, I don't believe that. I bet you could participate and do just fine. Fake name, Muppet, Animal Lover... Alan, uh, Electro Fry, uh, good to see everybody. Christina, indoor fishing inside. Um, uh, Vanua, Van, Vanua, truly awesome. Cool. Yeah, you just submitted yours. I just saw it. Okay, I just saw that one. Yep, definitely. Well, I'm just really happy to see that so many people are thinking about it and, um, you know, we have a good little community here, and there's a lot of people on the Facebook that talk to each other, um, beside the fact of me, and I love to see that, so, uh, that's great. I'm here to facilitate, not to, uh, not to, to, to point the way, so to speak. Um, so, I'm here to learn from you guys as well. What's up, Joe? Welcome. Uh, so... Yeah, if you still have an entry, feel free to enter it. Uh, if you're seeing this video, um, just put it on Facebook or email me at alexanderjwilliamson.com. Still not midnight anyways, but I just thought I'd do a little reminder. So I hope that it's okay, and I'm going to do it this way instead of the other way, but 
if you have a problem with me sharing a photo of your aquascape in a video or live stream that we do in the future when we do the unveiling or when we show likely on Tuesday we'll at, at around 5 p.m. West Coast time I'll probably be doing a rundown of all the entries so we can see that it might get pushed to Wednesday if people stagger in their submissions um, but I'll let you guys know um, so <laughs> sunny yeah uh, my friend actually he has a shirt company in Portland Oregon called urban hero and uh, he made me this because of the YouTube channel um, cause he said that fish people are weird, so he's calling us names, guys. Um, but in any case, so the other thing I wanted to mention is the, uh, podcast that I was just on. Um, if you want to hear about the actual history part, uh, it's a two hour podcast and it's on the Aquarium Guys podcast, which you can listen to anywhere where you can get podcasts, basically iTunes, Spotify, um, streaming stuff. I think there's like an iHeartRadio app that has podcasts on it too. So there's lots of places to check it out, including their website, including Facebook, I believe has links to it too. Um, and I would say that it has a little bit of talk kind of like, um, radio chat, like, um, what do you call it? Um, banter from the co-hosts and they answer some questions. So, so if you're not a longtime follower of the show, um, you know, uh, of, of the podcast that is, you may, you may want to just kind of breeze through it. Um, cause they're answering questions from other things, kind of inside jokes and stuff like that, because they have a really loyal following of folks. It's kind of like the late night show for fish, uh, keepers, you know? So, but in any case, we get into the meat and potatoes of some of these interesting tidbits on, on history and, we get into sea monkeys and how that actually fueled um, fish sales a whole bunch. And one of the guys who's a co-host has had a fish store since like the 70s. And the other guy is around my age is also a fish store, been around the business. And um, so it's it's an interesting mix. And they have a lot of good people. They had George Farmer on uh, two days ago. So yeah, check out their, their podcast. The other thing is I'm going to be working with Father Fish. I think I mentioned that before. But um, sometime this week we're going to hammer out what day. But we're just going to kind of casually do it where he's going to come on the live stream. Uh, we might do an extra live stream. I'll post as soon as I know when it's happening. Um, but Father Fish is going to come on and I'm going to talk to him about fish keeping in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Um, that I feel like that's a part of the hobby that is not chronicled on YouTube very well, and I would love to have his input, slash, uh, if he has any old gear, I'm gonna request that he, you know, shares that with us, like, films it, and he'll actually be on live, too. Um, yeah, tomorrow is Father Fish's 80th birthday, so it's pretty crazy. I'll be on his stream, likewise, uh, one of the days this week. I'll probably be checking in, it's very early my time, but a lot of times I'll stay up all night, um, because of, because, um, so yeah, but it, it'll be around, uh, I want to say, uh, on West Coast time, I think it starts at 5 a.m., or maybe, is it 5 a.m.? Yeah, because I think it, it starts, it, can, somebody, somebody might know in the chat, but his stream, I believe, starts either at 6, or 9, 9, 8 or 9 a.m., East Coast time, so that would make it 5 or 6 a.m. West Coast time, so, in it, yeah, it must be, it must be 5, so, yeah, 5 a.m. West Coast time, I know that's early, so you can catch the replay or whatnot, but I think I'm going to be chatting with him about, um, more nanofish and newer aspects of the, um, of the culture, as well as maybe some really old history and some kind of fun trivia, uh, things about like how fish were transported, um, some of the innovations that really allowed fish to be uh, a mainstream thing, uh, how they went from an aristocratic uh, thing where people would go down to the beach on the weekends, collect fish, they didn't really care if they died. It was actually mostly salt water and they'd put them in these ornate Victorian era aquariums 
for the week. And usually they'd catch them on like a Friday or a Saturday morning. And then people would come over and, and see them for a dinner party. And they'd look at whatever they had caught uh, in the tank. And then they'd take it back to the ocean or keep it until it passed away. Uh, but it, it wasn't actually um, a hobby that was focused on keeping the fish alive, unfortunately. But, eh, such is life. Uh, it evolved from there into a much more uh, democratized hobby. Taylor, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, also, tonight, I want to answer your questions because I've, I've, I, I do a pretty bad job of that um, when I have a topic that I'm really into. I know we had that three-part light series, so I hope now if anybody needs light advice that they can just watch those episodes. I have in the description linked it real quick, so if anybody doesn't want to watch the episode, they can see my opinion. They can click the link on the light they want, and uh, they can even order it. So uh, there's that. And then um, let's see, what else? Uh, there's some fish news that's kind of interesting that I'll tell you. I hope everybody, I'm really, my thoughts go out to everybody in California as well as Oregon and Washington. Uh, but, I mean, the forest fires are just really, really bad. Uh, I, uh, Vancouver and Victoria, for that matter, too, uh, you guys are getting just nailed by smoke as well. All the smoke for days went out into the ocean, and then it stalled, and then the wind changed, and it came back in and the wind's coming directly over land. So now it's all coming into a low front right here. Uh, so we went from like 95 degree weather to 50 degree weather, which actually was nice because 90 degrees in smoky is way worse than 50 degrees in smoky in my mind. But the parts per million uh, went up to as high as like 2000 parts per million, which is way past safe uh, for humans. So. Uh, let's see if I can show you real quick how, how dark it is still outside because of the ash now. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Let's flip this around. Yeah, check that out. So the sun is technically just gone down. And you can see it went down, I think, at 742 uh, here where I'm at. I'm very far west and far north. But, I mean, the smoke is, now that it's nighttime, you can see the light of the business down there. But, I mean, you can't see, the, there's, there's a mountain, well, not a mountain, but there's a 700-foot uh, hill over here. And then there's another two, three miles away. So, uh, earlier today, it was hard to even see, like, here. You can see the smoke around the lights and stuff. So... Um, we've got it bad, but not as bad as a lot of people. So, uh, I just, you know, my thoughts are going out to you guys if you're dealing with that or the actual flames themselves. Um, I do want to do an episode on wildfires and how they play such an integral role in, uh, the ecology of streams and lakes, though. Uh, it, it is really interesting. Uh, yes, Float. Excellent question. Excellent question. Um, another thing, uh, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of fish news you can not really use for anything. Uh, but the fish news that I was going to share with you guys is, are some articles that recently came out. I'm just going to run through them real quick uh, and then we'll be on our way with the episode. So uh, the first article, new news, new news, new news, in the new news is that. Uh, a articulated hill stream loach is right you know it looks like a little sting sucks onto rocks well all this is actually shipped down and it's sturdy enough that the fact that a fish has a pelvis is the point that's interesting so they found it and it was um this cave fish was uh blind and uh super albino and uh have been in this cave for i don't know at least a few million years but it's a large cave system in thailand and vietnam uh in limestone caves that runs for miles and miles of river on water and so the uh the cool news is that they found 31 species of uh of fish that have pelvises 
So that means that the fish either came from land or they're working towards being on land or at least using their hips and that sort of locomotion. Now, one of the blind cave fish is like a mud skipper kind of thing. And it definitely has been witnessed. It gets out of the water and crawls across stone and rock and will get into other parts of the river or puddles and things in the dry season. So they went and they thought, well, if it's got a pelvis, do any of the other hillstream loaches have it? And uh, yeah, <laughs> Taylor says their hips don't lie. Pelvic party. <laughs> exactly. So they're Pelarium Treasures. Welcome. And uh, Dead Pro Bobo. Hello. Oh, oh. Um, so, and Jerry. Hello. Uh, also, the other news that I thought was kind of interesting was, uh, and, and the reason they're, they noticed it was there's a lot of lakes this summer that haven't had um, as many people visiting because of the, the virus. And the populations of a lot of fry, minnow, um, and just juvenile, like rainbow trout, uh, kokanee, which are essentially landlocked salmon, all across the U.S., people were noticing now that all spring, the, they had a, a bumper crop size of, um, of that. I mean, like, of the populations, they all went up. And they were trying to figure out what's going on, and people were saying, oh, there's less pollution, oh, there's less air pollution, there's less this, there's less that. Well, that may have a factor, I don't know. But one thing that they've now shown in a paper, because it was in somebody's head that this area used to be full of people, beachgoers, swimming, they wanted to see if sunscreen had a bad impact on fish. And it turns out, yes, fish don't, fish get sickly and it hurts their immune system and their slime coat sunscreen but also beyond that um the the more uh like the more harmful part is it kills like 80 percent of daphnia even at the level of someone swimming in a one acre volume of water a cubic acre of water um, if they've applied sunscreen and they swim there in the day for whatever it was, four hours or something, they average it out. But that small trace amount of a couple chemicals that are in most sunscreens uh, is able to kill the baby Daphnia, um, which is really interesting. It's kind of like shrimp and copper. They can't deal with it. Just like copper tone, copper sulfate, there's different... Um, compounds in it that is a, a, a problem so um i don't know if copper tone's called that because it has any copper it's probably because you bronze when you tan i don't know but in any case if it does i'll look into it but i just thought that was interesting that uh they at least proved that sunscreen they i think they tried 12 brands of uh, leading brands and they found that all of them killed seed shrimp uh plankton and um particularly Daphnia and small crustaceans, micro crustaceans, which are the building block. They're the, you know, just like plankton is in the ocean or krill, um, they are the building block of, of uh, other fish growing up. And so this year there was way less people with sunscreen on in all sorts of freshwater bodies. And, um, I mean, beyond that, we know that there's things like estrogen for birth control that gets... Um, put into waste treatment plants and things like that. So I don't know. I thought that was an interesting story. I'm going to be following it. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, you guys should still wear sunscreen, obviously, but yeah, it's a little bit interesting. Um, Electrify says, I've heard stories of that flesh-eating bacteria. Does it affect the fish in the area it is in? Um... Let's see here. Are you talking about Vibrio? Uh, because, so there's there's a lot of flesh-eating bacteria, actually, and then there's some viruses that manifest as necrotizing viruses where they, they kill the, the flesh or skin. And usually they're not transmissible from fish to humans. I have an entire hour-long video on all the dangerous uh, things that fish can have. It's called, Can My Fish Make Me Sick? Or can I get sick from my aquarium? Something along those lines. So watch that video. But uh, essentially, um, yeah, there are 
a few dozen types of things that can make you very ill. They're pretty rare, and usually you have to have an immunodeficiency or a pretty bad wound and then be working in the aquarium. Maybe you have diabetes and you've got a wound that won't um, heal. And then you're working repeatedly in a tank that has exposure to that. Now, a lot of it comes in on shellfish, snails and things. And a lot of it is actually cool water um, is where it lives. So, you you know, you get other nasty things like brain-eating amoebas and stuff <laughs> in uh, warm water, stagnant water. But cool water has things like Vibrio and, um, you know, um, T fish TB and stuff like that, too. So... You can watch that episode, though, uh, and it goes into very, very, very into depth on that. Also, let's see here. Chad C., should we protect our fish from smoke? Uh, we put charcoal filters on our air pumps, but I wonder if it's necessary. No, um, you know, the thing is, if you start seeing that the top of your water has a film of any sort, then I would worry about it. But really, to get a bad amount of, I mean, to get a harmful amount, you're going to need agitation. What, what am I doing? I'm trying to show you guys something by tilting it when I could just point it this way. But so say the water agitation is like this. Even that, it's not going to get enough smoke under the water to really cause it's just not enough agitation to to disrupt the surface and when smoke hits the surface the 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 water you can see the surface and the water and it holds my hand essentially uh, so it, it smoke has doesn't have enough density to get down in there unless the surface is being agitated um I mean, I, this is a bit crass, but if you guys have ever seen a bong, um, that's the kind of level of agitation you would need to infuse smoke into the water. You know, you need to be pulling the smoke through, um, which if you do have a big air pump and it's outside, I suppose, and you're in one of those like thousand parts per million uh, areas of the country right now, I suppose it might not hurt to put like a box over that and um, maybe uh, or maybe build um, a couple filters like take uh, the the furnace filters that you can get the um, what are they called m34 mr 34s I think they're called uh, but they're basically just the they're for your for a, a central heating uh, or furnace or air conditioner and you can buy them for about 14 bucks but if if you had a big fish room you could easily get like four of those or five of those I suppose I mean you could try it with one but you could build a box out of them if you really wanted to go to town and then you really wouldn't have to worry about it but honestly that level of worrying I mean if you live like in the middle of a city or something um, car pollution and things like that are probably honestly more of an adverse effect as they also have um, heavy metals and things like that whereas forest fires uh, tend to not have the worst things in the air um, volcanic eruptions on the other hand are like fiberglass um, and cement for your lungs so I would have different advice for that Rob's Ray TV how's it going um, yes <laughs> if you made a, uh, an aquascape with beer cans, I would 100% be cool with it. Um, I would love to see that. You know, I actually talked to um, Steve Waldron, who owns Aquarium Zen, about doing urban aquascape, finding old trash, sealing it with acrylic and epoxy, and doing like a toxic waste dumping ground, you know, with like brick as the background wall and like. Uh, maybe a sewer grate as the lid like I don't know I just thought I haven't seen that and not that it should be done but it's kind of like modern art you know it doesn't mean that it just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean it should be but I do kind of feel like somebody's got to do it once and then you can say okay that was silly uh, or ugly but uh, you know whatever someone did it at least by the way I love these banded African dwarf barbs they're they're real special to me. I like them. I got them on sale super cheap. Some of them look like they have kind of 
sunken stomachs. It's the females, um, and they'll have a plump stomach one day, and then because I set the ones that had sunken stomachs aside, but like within a week they fill out, or even less, like three or four days they fill back out. So I think it's what they look like before they drop all their eggs, um, which is interesting. I don't know. I, I hadn't kept them before, so I thought that was a bit interesting. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Oh, Chad C said, we covered them with plastic wrap during the tear gas. Yeah, tear gas is different. Tear gas is banned in war, even. I mean, it can cause chromosomal damage and things like that um, in animals. Uh, supposedly in humans, it's a little safer than they've shown in animals, but fish are very sensitive to a lot of those things. Um, if you're in an area, like if you were in downtown Portland or Seattle or Minneapolis or something where there's a lot of tear gas, definitely get a filter if you're getting any gas in, in there. Um, can fish and shrimp eat spicy peppers? Is cap Will capsaicin hurt them? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I... I know that other animals don't like it. I know that it hurts other animals. However, I've never, I mean, I've put peppers in, not super hot ones, but I've even put like a jalapeno in a tank and I've had plecos eat it. So I don't know what the answer would be about high levels, but I wouldn't try it unless um, you really hate those fish. Uh, I'd stick with non-capsaicin uh, non-high level capsaicin anyways. Uh, L.I., thank you so much. $9 super chat, uh, $10 super chat, $9.99, $9.99 plan. I ended up getting three neon gobies yesterday. They're being a little bit shy, but they're fun to watch. Your video definitely was the push I needed. Awesome to hear that. Um, and like I said too earlier, if any of you guys, um, want to get any of these little gobies, right now I saw that aquarium or like arts online which the link in the description below of course i always try to put the the discounts codes and things like that but they had some orange ones some rainbow ones and some i mean they have a few non um synodonis ones and in this tank i just am keeping uh synodonis uh loaches but the other tank behind me, I, I, I'll keep other kinds, uh, like the lipstick gobies and stuff like that. Or, I don't know why I said loaches, gobies. Um, let's see. Oh, only mammals can detect capsaicin. Alan, thank you. So, maybe you can feed your fish it just fine then. I don't know. I don't want to be the one who says feed your fish like a ghost pepper, though, and then your fish dies. Um, aqua balls. Good to see you, Mang. How's it going? Uh... Have you ever tried feeding your plecos banana peels? Do they like them? I have not tried um, banana peels. No, I haven't tried that one. I have tried bananas themselves, though, and they'll eat that. It's full of carbs. They like it. Um, like plecos. Actually, quarries really like it, too. I'm seeing both quarries. I didn't even know there were quarries in this tank. Uh, like, I thought I got them all out a while back, and... In this tank, we've got quarries again. They've just grown up hiding. They've grown up in hiding. They're, they're too smart for me. And the little cherry shrimp are doing great in here, which surprised me. I thought the pseudomagills would eat the baby shrimp quickly, but they haven't. I mean, look at all the little shrimp just chilling and doing their thang, doing their shrimpy shrimp thang thang. Um... Also, so yeah, Father Fish doing the episodes. We're doing, uh, he's coming on my show. I'm coming on his show. Uh, also, then uh, check out the Aquarium Guys podcast, of course. Alan, oh, we got another super chat. Thank you so much, Alan. Alan is helping me judge and uh, organize all the Aquascape contest stuff. So yeah, Abolish Farms, welcome. Um, Thought for uh, thoughts for a tank setup designed to try and breed panda loaches. I'm thinking a 48 inch tank with high flow, lots of rocks. What am I missing? Okay, Alan. So, uh, panda loaches, my favorite little nano fish, hands down. I love them. I love how they all sleep in a pile together. Um, I just think they're fascinating. 
Uh, right now they're all spread out because it's not bedtime for them yet, but once once I turn the light off, they all huddle up on this rock usually, or that rock. But um, they live in here and they don't touch a single hair, as it were, on any of these shrimp. Ooh, we got a shrimp that needs culling right there. Uh, but in any case, when they're babies, they have this look, right? So my opinion on breeding them is yes, 48, 48 inches is a good place to start. I think um, I've tried in this 10 gallon and I've tried in 20 longs. The best success I've ever had was two fry that have survived. Um, they're very small, like larval when they're born. And I know in Germany and Indonesia now they are growing them with, uh, what do you call it? Um, growth hormone, human growth hormone apparently works on fish. I know I've mentioned that before. It's odd to me. I thought they'd have their own separate chemical, but it's just a growth hormone. I guess we should just call it growth hormone. But I think uh, what's key is having a high flow. I think it's very key to have a sandy layer and some stone layer where you can get things like seed shrimp. I think it needs to be a tank that has some algae, a lot of biofilm, just like you would for a goby tank or um, anything like that. And from what I've gathered, the seasonality is also important. So one of the weird things about panda loaches to keep them um, to keep them super happy is you need. Ideally, they like lower TDS, so that's kind of odd. Um, in that they also like calcium in their water though calcium and carbon but then they also like neutral to slightly acidic water sometimes um their stream is actually pretty adaptable they live in two different streams in china and then it gets hit by the wet season and it gets really cold when that happens it drops like 10 degrees and that's um that's when they spawn is in the in the in the wet season 